stand for a call to worship. Number one, praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him for he is thy help and salvation. Father, we come this morning to worship for you. We pray that you will send your spirit, that it will be with us, that we will be strengthened and blessed this day. We ask in thy name. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. Good to see you. You know, it is Sabbath. It's a wonderful day. We're glad you're here. And I think all the announcements have been made. But we would like to reemphasize there is a lunch prepared in the room down to my right. All you visitors are more than welcome to stay. We're glad to see the visitors here this morning. We want you to come back and be with us again. Let's continue our service now with our opening hymn. <laughs> Let's stand for number 470. There is sunshine in my soul today. All the glory has been Let it close me and let it let me smile. For Jesus is my Lord. Oh, there is sunshine. I did miss one announcement. I apologize. Uh, today is actually children's uh, church, and so our service is a little bit different. I guess we're creatures of habit, and we just kind of go along without even thinking, so that was my fault that I missed that. So at this time, we're going to have uh, our children's story, and uh, please, children, as you come forward, bring the baskets uh, forward with you as well.
Good morning. Hey, sweetie. You want to go sit with Emma? You want to sit with Emma? Okay, go sit with Anna. Okay. Everybody got a seat? Okay. All right, little people. How many like storms, like thunderstorms? Do you like thunderstorms? I love thunderstorms. We have a really big bed, but when there are thunderstorms at my house, it is full of kids. It becomes like a little sardine can. It looks like a big bed, but you put eight people in that bed, and that's okay. What are parents for, right? Well, I really do like thunderstorms. I remember one time when I was a little girl, and we kind of lived in the country. We had some property. And I remember one time they said there was a storm coming. And so I went out on my front porch. And it was, it was warm. It was one of those, it's warm outside, but it's kind of chilly because you feel a breeze and a little bit of the rain come in. And I looked at, I sat on this little chair and I looked out and I could see these huge dark clouds headed this way. They were huge. They were kind of exciting. And they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then there was lightning and thunder and rain. And it was really cool because I was protected by my porch. Because there was like, you know, what is that called? Not a roof, but like a, I don't know, something over my head. Yeah, it was nice. I remember this other storm one time we in that same house. It was so loud that it woke me up in the middle of the night. And so I went out to our dining room where this really big window was. And apparently it was a really loud storm because my dad woke up too. And we had one of those lights that go off when the sun comes up. I don't know why we had one of those lights because we lived in the country, but we did. And there was so much lightning flashing constantly that that light thought it was daytime and it turned off. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was cool. Then there was this other time at my parents' house where they live now. I was sitting on the couch and I was looking at these windows. And do you know what I saw? You will never believe it in a gazillion years. I saw it right. No, it was bigger and worse. But that was a good guess. It was like probably from here to those church doors back there. It was a tornado. And I promise, I am not telling a lie. A tornado formed right there. And we watched it like pull together. And we're like, no way. That is a tornado. That is a tornado. And we were like, wow. And do you know what my mom said? Do you know what my mom said? She said, go downstairs, go downstairs. Do you know what my dad said? Get the video camera, where's the video camera? <laughs> it was like, wow, we couldn't believe it. We'd only seen those like on TV, you know, but it was the real deal. And you know what it did? That's for real, that's a true story. It was close, it was like, like I couldn't believe it was happening. It jumped over my mom and dad's house and it went down the street and it tore a few trees out of the ground and tore up a few roofs and tornadoes can really do some damage, huh? That's right. They can be kind of scary, but it, it didn't touch my parents' house, which is really strange. That's right. You know, there was this other storm at my house that um, one of those big sirens went off outside my house. The whole woo. You know, you guys ever hear that? Oh, it's loud in here. But... And so I think I only had like maybe four kids at the time, maybe five. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I just remember all the trips downstairs and upstairs to get more because we didn't have enough hands and we kept carrying our little kids downstairs. And downstairs in our house, there's a play area and lots of toys. And so those sirens were going off in the middle of the night and we were a little scared. So we were grabbing our kids as fast as possible and hunkered down the stairs and we realized it could be more dangerous downstairs than upstairs because there were toys and things everywhere that could fall on us. And So uh, the funny thing is that 
actually, it must have been like tornado season because it just seemed like maybe a week or two later, you know, the same thing happened again, but we had learned our lesson. When that siren went off, we had tucked some blankets and some pillows downstairs just in case that happened again so we could snuggle in our kids a little safer. And it did, and we used it. We were sure happy we had our little pillows and blankets when that happened again. We were prepared, right? Well, right, your blankies. Ugh, can't live without those. Well, the reason I tell you guys is um, a couple of days back, one of my little girls came to me and said, Mommy, I'm afraid. And I said, what are you afraid of? She said, I'm afraid of earthquakes. Have you guys been hearing about the earthquakes that have been happening? Yeah, there's quite a few of them. And then it was just, I guess, like a few days after that, another one of my little girls, six years old, six years old, guys, asked me the question, she said, how will I know when Jesus comes if that's the real Jesus? Six years old. They're listening, okay? <laughs> I thought, oh, wow. Okay, you know what? We need, to, we need to talk. And so I don't know if you guys know this or how much you talk to your parents, you hear about the things that are going on, but um, I know it can be kind of scary, all this stuff we hear about the earthquakes and floods and things like that. But the Bible says one thing very important. It says, don't worry, period. Don't worry. That doesn't mean put your feet up and get a cup of hot cocoa and put on a movie. But it says, don't worry, okay? And just like we heard those sirens go off outside our house to warn us that there was a bad storm and a tornado coming, the Bible has warnings in it about things that are going to happen right before Jesus comes. And I just think it's really important that you guys hear me, that some stuff is going to happen that might seem a little scary, but it's okay because Jesus loves us and he's going to protect us. And do you know why this stuff happens? Do you know? Jesus allows all this stuff to happen so that the whole universe can see how bad sin is. That way, when Jesus comes back to get us, there will be no doubt in anybody's mind that sin was a really bad thing and it'll never happen again. So I want you to remember that Jesus loves you very much. And just like that tornado hopped right over my house and went on down the street, you know, in times like that, you know, or whether we... We know that this storm is coming. We know that things are going to happen. We can do things to prepare. We can plant a garden. We can make sure our hearts are ready for Jesus. Because I am telling you what, it's going to be awesome when he comes. And it's not like he's going to show up down the street. If somebody runs in and says, I'm so excited. Jesus is across the street. Let's go see him. No, that's not the real deal. Because the Bible says every eye will see him. Every single one. I, I assume that means puppies and everything. We'll all see him, okay? And there will be no doubt, all right? So it's really something to look forward to. And the Bible says to keep watch. Just like I sat out on that front porch and I watched the storm come in. It was really exciting. Keep watch because Jesus is coming soon. And I know this, this can be hard sometimes, but I just want you to know it's okay and Jesus will take care of you, and we'll all be safe, and we will all meet together in heaven someday soon, okay? Okay, you guys can go back to your seats. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Today's scripture reading is Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. 
And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. you now to kneel as we have over in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we bow before thee this Sabbath day, we thank thee for setting aside a day for us that we may come to thee and worship, come apart from the world and the cares we have, that we may rest in your sa uh, saving grace and we may have a chance to put aside those cares and the worries that the world has thrown at us every day, that may we come to you and understand that you are a God of power, of wisdom, of order, and as things around us seem to be falling apart, we know that just your plan that this world is very temporary, that we may have an a, a eternal home, that if we keep looking to you, that you will guide us and you will give us the strength and the direction in which we may go. We thank thee again for those that are here. We ask to be with those that are not here. Help wherever they be. We have a Sabbath day blessing. Be with those that are sick, that are hurting. Give them comfort. Let them know that you're still in charge, that even though things may look hopeless to them, that there is hope. We thank thee again for the message you're going to be brought to us today. Be with Gene as he brings us your word. Bless those that are also leading out in the mission fields that have many challenges that we don't understand. Be with them and give them strength. Give them encouragement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is now time for our offering, and um, our offering this week is for West of uh, local church budget. And typically, the conference sends out readings for every offering, and they consist of some very interesting stories, uh, some current, some from many years ago, where congregations and people were blessed. And uh, I, didn't, I chose not to read them today because I think we have our own story right here. I think this congregation has been blessed in a lot of ways over the last 25 plus years. And this church is just part of it, this building. And um, I think that uh, as we dig down deep in our souls and, and, and our conscience, that we owe a lot and we've been blessed a lot. And uh, we have a responsibility. And so I'm just going to let the Lord speak to each one of us how we need to respond. But. Uh, your gifts, your tithes, your offerings are being blessed to the furthering their work. And, you know, uh, at the end, we're not going to have our homes or money or anything else, so uh, why hang on to it? Will the deacons please come forward? <coughs> Dear my fathers, we return a portion of the many gifts that you've given to us. We ask you bless these offerings, help them to further thy work, not only here locally but around the world, that uh, your soon coming will be hastened and we will be taken off for this 
world that gives us uh, many challenges, many griefs. And as we spoke about in our Sabbath school lesson, as we get to heaven, we will be every day continually learning and being surprised by the gloriousness of your uh, being, of your creature, creations and creatures. We ask that bless us uh, again as we uh, give back to you the many gifts you so generously given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. there for 
Open up your heart to find the love like you've never, ever had. There is someone who cares. There is someone who dares to love you. And his arms are open wide, waiting there for you to run in. Good morning. Glad you're here. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. Our Father in heaven, we ask again that you will send your presence to be with us. Send your spirit. We pray that we will be filled with your blessings this morning and that each one of us will gain an insight into thy world as we go today. We ask in thy name. Amen. You know, I'm told that the attention span of the average person is approximately 20 minutes. You know, I may not be able to keep your attention for 20 minutes, but I'm sure of one thing. That's just about all the longer it will take. You know, the title of today's talk is A Sure Thing. read an article recently that where the Attorney General for the state of Missouri was stopping someone from soliciting funds in the state to build coffee houses in Russia. Supposedly, the Russian government wanted coffee houses so the people would drink coffee more than vodka. You know, because vodka is their national drink, I've been told. I've never been there, but, you know. <clears throat> And supposedly, if you invested in these coffee houses and built them, then the Russian government would talk Starbucks into coming over, taking over the coffee house, and then at a price that would make you rich. They would reimburse you for all this money. Well, it didn't work out. It wasn't a sure thing after all. But how about you? Did you ever have someone tell you it's a sure thing? You know? Man, it's a sure thing. You can't lose. Did you try it? Did you doubt it? You know? Benjamin Franklin has been quoted as saying, the only sure thing in life is death and taxes. You know, there may be a few sure things in this life, but there are things that we can be sure of. 
things like the promises of God. The one that is given in our scripture today, found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, which Joshua read to us. <clears throat> this is one of the promises of God. Paul states, My God shall supply all your needs according to all his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. So we can be sure that God will supply our needs, but what are our needs? What do we need? What do we think we need? You know, I think that's got a lot to do with it. There's a story about a young man that lived on a hilltop. He had lived in a house that was not real great, but it was adequate. It met their means. It was a nice place to live. And then in the evening after work, he would sit on his front steps, and he would look over on the other hill, and he would see this house. Oh, it had beautiful windows. They looked just like gold. You know, day after day, he set out on his steps. He looked at the house. You know, the more he looked at it, the more he wanted one like that. So one day, he made up his mind. He was going over to the hill, and he was going to see this house. He had to see those beautiful gold windows. He had to find out if he could get some like that. So he got up early one morning, took his food and his water, traveled down the hill, across the valley, and up the other hill, taking all day. He arrived at the house just about dusk. He looked around. He was sure he was in the right place. What did he find? Not a house with golden windows, but a broken, run-down house. Matter of fact, part of the house didn't even have windows in it. He was kind of disappointed. So being late in the evening and getting close to dark, he decided to find shelter for the night and stay. He spent the night. The next morning, he got up. He looked back over his house as he started his journey home. Guess what? The house looked like it had gold windows. Then he realized, you know, this is the sun reflecting in the windows of the house that made them look gold. He returned home satisfied and content with his own house. You know, he realized that it supplied his needs. 1 Timothy 6.6 6 states that godliness with contentment is great gain. He, he gained great contentment. You know, our basic needs can be put into two classes. One, material. One, spiritual. And it seems like we more or less always get our focusing mixed up on these things. We begin to focus more and more on our material things, probably because we see TV ads, we see people pushing things that we must have, things that we need to get by in life, you know. So our spiritual needs sometimes take a second place in life. We want all these things that we've seen. We try to keep up with our neighbors and friends. We even try spiritual things like prayer to seek what we need. And we read verses in the Bible and say, yeah, we can do it, you know. I once listened to a sermon by a pastor, and he used his based his sermon on a text found in Matthew, verse 633. And he read the text. It says, Seek the Lord in his righteousness, and then all these things will be added. You know? He asked his congregation several questions. You want nice clothes? You want a new car? You want a new house? You want to live the good life? After each question, he inserted the words, 
Seek the Lord. Yeah. Seek the Lord, and supposedly it will bring you all these things. If you'd like, open your Bible to Matthew chapter 6, and let's start reading with verse 31 and see exactly what it does say. Matthew 6, verse 31 and 32 and 33. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Were we promised all the nicer things of life? No. What were we promised? It says our Heavenly Father knows what we need, and he will give it to us. You know, <clears throat> our scripture said our needs will be supplied. How should this affect our thinking? if we really ask for it and don't get it. Did we need it? You know, it gives us something to really think about. Verse in James, chapter 4, verse 3 says, You ask, and you do not receive, because you ask amiss. I looked up the word amiss, and it says wrong things, you know, we want something we don't really need, so we ask and we don't receive it. Why? He goes on to say that you may, because that you would spend it on your pleasures. We didn't need it. It doesn't do us any good. It's something we asked for that we didn't need. You know? Furthermore, in our scripture, Paul says that my God will supply all of our needs. Paul's God. Who is Paul's God? The God who converted him on the road to Damascus? The God of heaven? Our God. God will supply. <clears throat> you know... There are plenty of times in the Bible and plenty of stories where God has supplied. One of the most prominent ones that I thought of as I was studying this was the story of Elijah. You know, Elijah did what God told him. He went and talked to the wicked king and queen and told them, you know, because of their sins and the people's sins, he was going to withhold the rain. And then he became afraid for his life. And he ran. You know, while he was running, he says God directed him to a brook. And there he stayed by the brook in the wilderness. And the ravens fed him. Morning and night, the ravens brought him food. You know, <clears throat> then as the drought persisted, the brook dried up. So what did God do? Elijah met a woman, a widower. She was gathering sticks to prepare her last meal. She had just enough flour and oil to cook a little cake for her and her son. And then she decided that would be it. Elisha said, Fix me a cake first. If you fix my cake first, your flour and your oil will not run out until the drought is over. It will last until there is rain. The woman took a little bit of faith, I think. She did what Elijah said. She fixed his cake. Sure enough, Flour didn't run out. The jar of oil didn't run dry. It lasted 
until there was rain and there was more food for her. And then as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story goes on. She was blessed by this. We all know what happened. Her son died. Her faith was rewarded. Elijah prayed for her son, and the Lord brought him back to life. You know? We may not have a miracle like this in our life when God provides our needs, but he does work according to his promise. Sometimes we can see it happen, and other times we just simply get to know that it did happen. In the last part of our scripture reading, God promises, he says, God provides in glory by Jesus Christ. Jesus, our connection. If we follow him, he's our connection to receiving our needs. The story is told of an ambitious young man who told his friend he had a blueprint for his life. He said, it's simple. I'm going to work hard. First he was going to get real smart, then he was going to work hard. He was going to make a lot of money. He was going to retire early in life. He divided this thing up into sections. The second part, after he made all this money, he was going to travel, enjoy recreation and pleasures. His friend said, well, what about religion? Don't you have any place for spiritual things in your life? Oh, that will come third, he said. After I've worked, got all my money, enjoyed life, you know, then I will think about religion. Let's back up to our text in Matthew. What did it tell us? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If we want our needs filled, that's what we must do. Another story that we, I read is when asked about when asked what religion had done for her, an elderly lady stated that years before, she was left as a widow with eight children and nothing to call her own except a Bible. She stated that by following its directions, praying to God, she had been able to clothe and care for her family. Now, in her later life, she was looking forward to the life of immortality with Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> Psalms 33:12 says that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people he has chosen for his inheritance. The Bible is full of people who chose God and was blessed. Some of the outstanding ones that we know of were <clears throat> Daniel and his three companions. You know, we know what they did, and they stood for what was right. They became leaders in the country. Abraham, you know, he took God for his word. He put him first. He followed him. He became the leader of a great nation. Moses, he listened to God. He followed as another leader for the same great nation. And then there was David, you know. David, we all know, had his ups and downs, and yet God said David was a man after his own heart. And I've thought about that a lot of times. Did he mean that David was like him? Or did he mean that David was really after God's heart? You know? He was a man after God's heart. You can take it both ways. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. These all did. They were great leaders. So by accepting Jesus, believing in him, and doing his will, the guidelines that he gives us tells us that not only our needs will be supplied, but we will be blessed. You see, 
our needs supplied by Him are really our blessings. He gives us these needs. Then do we ever stop to think that it is a blessing? There's an old gospel song that says, count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Have you ever tried counting your blessings? You know, we look and think, what, how have we been blessed? Sometimes we overlook all of the simple things that we take for granted. The fact that we can come here this morning and worship, is that a blessing? There are people in countries that do not have that privilege, you know? How about the fact that we have clean water to drink, good food to eat, you know, the things that are going on around in the world, people starving to death, people having water that, uh, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't even want to touch it, let alone drink it, you know. And yes, we need to thank God for our friends. We need our friends. Yeah, you know, sure along the way our, our needs, our blessings come along, there's going to be hardships to overcome. You know? <clears throat> but sometimes those hardships, we don't know how to take them. And yet, we need to think of them a little bit like the little boy that made a boat. He made it. It was so nice. He tied it to a string, and he got out into the lake, and he was going to let it sail a little bit. But somehow or other, a wave or a wind or both. Maybe the wind kicked up a little bit of a wave and it pulled the boat, the string slipped out of his hand, and it got a little too far away from him. He couldn't get to it. The water was deeper there. He couldn't get out. So there was an older person there and he called him and he said, help me. I need my boat. Can you get it for me? With that, the older person picked up some rocks and began to throw at the boat, or so the young boy thought. He's throwing rocks at my boat. He's not helping me. He wants to sink it. And then he realized the rock was going on the other side of the boat. With each rock, a little wave would come up, and the boat would come closer to the bank. You know, sometimes our hardships are that way. Each one brings us a little closer to God. So if we accept Christ in our life and keep him there and accept him as the truth, we can really be sure that our needs on this earth are supplied. And our final reward will be even greater. Isaiah 64, verse 4, tells us that ear has not heard, nor eye has not seen the glories that God has prepared for them who wait for him. And then Revelation 22, 14, really tells us of our reward. It says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. A sure thing? Yes. This is a sure thing. Our closing hymn is number 195. There shall be showers of blessings. <clears throat> Shall we stand? There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us so falling. But the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious revival again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing. 
our Father again. We ask your blessing. We pray, dear Father, that as we realize you will supply our needs, that they will be our blessings. And as we are blessed, we will remember that it is you that is doing it, that we will follow you, stay with you, and reap the reward that is promised us. We ask in thy name. Amen. Thank you.